Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. Welcome to Wednesday, July the 8th, 2020. Hope your day is going well. Tropics kind of busy today with uh, Christina here in the eastern Pacific. We'll start off with this. Going to strengthen into a hurricane as it moves farther away from the Mexican coastline over here, so that's good news. It might send out some swells towards the Baja, so Cabo San Lucas area. Uh, maybe you guys will get some wave action up that way. We'll see. Other than that, the pattern is not conducive for these systems right now to turn towards mainland Mexico, the Baja Peninsula included, so no worries there. Um, the big story, I guess, if you want to call it that, is going to be the developing system now moving off the coast of the Carolinas here in Vest Area 98L. Uh, probably becomes a tropical storm over the warm waters of the western Atlantic before it moves northward just along or off of the outer banks over here and then eventually into the mid-Atlantic and up into the northeast. It's going to be a rainmaker. Unfortunately, it's going to probably spoil the weekend in terms of rain and some wind and some choppy seas. Overall, the impacts will be low, but there will be impacts. Small craft, you know, boats. Uh, you think about Chesapeake Bay, Delaware Bay, and getting up into Long Island Sound, etc. You guys need to be mindful of this because there will be some wind associated with it, but it's not going to be a very high impact event. I wouldn't worry about it too much, and you know you shouldn't either. But it is there, so we'll be keeping an eye on it. Uh, Hurricane Center watching it obviously. Recon today was scheduled, but then it got canceled. It's just not very well organized. And this is part of this overall disturbed area that goes along for thousands of miles, this area of convergence, and you get these little beads of vorticity that form along that, little pockets of energy that we've talked about, and here you go. And <clears throat> by the way, the next name will be Fay if this does get named, and we'll be up to the sixth name storm of the season, and it really hasn't even begun in terms of the main part of the season and when we talk about the main part of the season that's these tropical waves here these very strong impulses that come off of Africa they're not developing right now at least not in the Atlantic uh, there's Christina by the way over here in the eastern Pacific but you notice as I circle all of these different areas and we can include 98L here a lot more in the way of convection or shower and thunderstorm activity across the Atlantic Basin. So we're slowly but surely increasing the upward motion, increasing the amount of convection. It's less dry out there. There's still a lot of upper-level wind uh, that's too strong for things to develop, but the pattern is gradually becoming more favorable. And we can even see that reflected in the vorticity signature. Uh, really nice tool, a lot more energy out here across the Main development region here is 98L with its energy. That's what it looks like when you have a tropical storm. We talked about this yesterday. I love pointing this out. Concentrated energy, vorticity. There you go. That's what it looks like. And again, the Atlantic is leaning more and more into that direction as we progress through the month of July. I still think we're going to squeeze out between one and three named storms down here in the main development region, somewhere between the west coast of Africa and the Lesser Antilles. Um, this doesn't count towards my um, theory, or you know, I guess it's a forecast, prediction, my gut feeling, whatever you call it, uh, what would eventually become Fay here. This is different. This is from energy, you know, like we've talked about, that comes off the continent, and I'm not as concerned about that. If we do see the development out here over the coming weeks before the end of the month, that's going to really signify this notion and solidify it that we're going to have a very, very busy hurricane season in front of us. All right, so the radar signature here, just to show you off the coast of the Carolinas, the low pressure center might be back over here somewhere, but a bulk of the rain is out here to the east, and that's going to help to pull the low pressure area out. And it probably comes up along the coast, something like that. Uh, most of the precipitation will stay to the east, but again, as we and we'll look at the GFS in a moment and show you what the precip shield probably looks like. Not a big deal, you know, heavy rain, some gusty winds, choppy seas, like I mentioned. There are impacts, 
but don't get too worked up about this. It might be called Tropical Storm Fay at some point, and that's fine. And, you know, it keeps you aware of it, especially, I'm going to emphasize this again, if you're in a small craft, a small motorboat, a small sailboat, and you're out in the waters, Delaware, Chesapeake Bay, Long Island Sound, like I said, and then eventually up off the coast of New England, uh, you know, just be aware of it, because this is a bigger weather event. I mean, this system right here, this is bigger than you. And if anything's bigger than you, then you should take it seriously. That's the way I look at it. Water temperatures generally warm enough until just before the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay there. This is about the 80 degree Fahrenheit line. We call lines of equal temperature isotherms. Iso meaning equal therm in this case, you know, temperature or thermometer or whatever you want to call it, heat. And so anything north of there as this moves north, uh, water temperature is much colder. And so it'll just be sort of a broad, messy, low-pressure system. Again, it might have a name, but don't get caught up in the name. Tropical storm, low-pressure area, hybrid storm, whatever. As I said, it's bigger than you. There will be impacts. So just be aware of it and take it seriously if you're out, especially if you're out on the water in small craft. All right? So looking at the GFS from one perspective here, this is the entire, uh, most of it, the North Atlantic Basin and you can see here's the west coast of Africa, eastern part of North America over here. And as we put this into motion over the next few days, you don't really see much in the way of organized vorticity. There's our system right there. I'll circle it for you if it doesn't stand out enough. And yeah, it does try to consolidate here. This is now 48 hours out. We'll just jump to that just to make it easier. So between now in 48 hours, it ramps up, you know, okay, and it moves in there towards Delaware, the Delmarva Peninsula, and up along the Mid-Atlantic into the Northeast. Like I said, rainmaker, yes. Big wind event, storm surge problems, no. Some heavy surf, just kind of a nasty weekend as this moves up Thursday, Friday, Saturday, early Saturday morning, it's up into New England, and there you go. So, hey, maybe... Just maybe our friend uh, from the Weather Models uh, site that we referenced, Jack Sillen. Maybe he'll get to, he's in Maine, I believe. He can maybe drive over to uh, Vermont. Looks like this gets up into Vermont, New Hampshire region. And he can go get under that vorticity and tell us what's going on. Seriously, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. Uh, a a you know, semi-tropical entity heading up into his neck of the woods. Kind of rare, especially where it came from. We're used to seeing long track hurricanes uh, that can, trying to get this to draw on it, come on, that can come around and they might come up into New England like that. I'm, I'm just saying that's what we're used to seeing. You know, we think about Irene back in 2011 and that's almost the perfect track of Irene by the way. That's pretty coincidental. Uh, but Irene did that. Vermont, New Hampshire, they had flooding up there. Um, anyway, the heavy rain threat will be a big deal. There could be a lot of heavy rainfall. So pay attention to that. Keep reminding you. Keep the impacts in perspective, but don't ignore it and blow it off as being a non-event. That's not true either. It's not a major event, but it's not a non-event. So here's what the precip looks like. This is the uh, North American shot. Just so you know, there's the east coast of the U.S., mid-Atlantic, Cape Hatteras, etc., and so this gives you an idea of what the precipitation shield would look like according to the modeling, the GFS here. See what I mean? It's kind of east-weighted there, moves right along the mid-Atlantic up into New England, some heavy rain. Uh, those oranges that you see depicting, I think, previous, um, what is that? The average precip rate in millimeters per hour, something like that. So this gives you an idea. Uh, of the shape of it, what the model thinks, etc. Uh, and the isobars, and they're a little breezy, and these isobars, those are lines of equal pressure right in there. And there's a few little isobars, what is that, about 1,004. So kind of breezy, you know, like a, a summertime nor'easter that's not real potent. Look at it that way. All right, speaking of potent, you know, don't shoot the messenger here. Don't get mad at me. I'm just trying to keep you aware this is not hype, it's not fear-mongering, 
Again, if you went to the doctor and the doctor said, hey, you're getting a little heavy, your blood pressure is going up, or, you know, we, we took a scan and we see some things that we're a little concerned about, um, you know, you don't immediately rush to say, oh, my God, I got cancer, oh, it's the end of the world. You know, sometimes that's the case, but, you know, you don't punch the doctor in the face. You say, okay, what do we got to do about it? And, you know, I think back to what happened to me, if you don't know the story, in late 2018, after years of ignoring my doctor, I was getting heavy, my blood pressure was going up, it darn near killed me. You know, and I had a, what's called an aortic dissection uh, while I was on vacation with my wife, no less, in Las Vegas. And I almost died. And, you know, my doctor told me for many years, more than a decade, I needed to do something about it, and I ignored it. So I don't, I don't want you, and it does work the same way. We ignore what we feel like makes us feel anxiety ridden about something, right? You, you hear about a busy hurricane season and you get upset. Don't get upset with me. Don't get upset with Ben for making these charts and maps. Look at it as a gift. We know in advance using the technology that it could be a very busy season ahead. And that's what we're looking at here. Ben Knoll, smart guy, meteorologist, you know, he's down in New Zealand forecasting for pretty much anywhere on the globe. You know, you could be on Mars, like I said, and if you have internet, you can do whatever you want. And it's amazing what we can see with the technology. This is the North American Multimodel Ensemble. That's what NMME stands for, if I remember correctly. And all those greens that we're seeing is the old run, which is right there, versus the new run, which is here. So that's old, that's new. And the dark green you see all through here, I'm going to highlight it in, why don't we use sky blue? This is highlighting the area of enhanced precipitation anomalies. And you can see this is for the peak of the season, August through October, and it's painting the picture, quite literally, of a very, very busy time ahead. And we need to look at that not fearfully and with anxiety. And I know that's easy for me to say, but I live on the coast too. I mean, I get it. I empathize with you folks. I really do. Look at it as a sign. All right. You know, it's just like the doctor saying I could lose 5 or 10 pounds, get the blood pressure down, whatever. Eat better. You need to mitigate what might be coming in the future now. Make sure you're ready. Have a plan of action, whatever's in your budget to do, and just be aware. That's the number one key here, and that's my job, all right? Not trying to scare you. I'm trying to motivate you and encourage you using what we have with all of this foresight so that nobody can say, well, I had no idea it was going to be that bad. Maybe it won't be. You know, maybe it'll be fine. But in case it's not, we got this advance warning and I think that's a gift. All right, so take it for what it's worth. All right, I'm done. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and um, keep an eye on things, especially along the East Coast, but not too big of a deal, I don't think, and we'll take it as it comes. Uh, have a great rest of your Wednesday afternoon. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Don't forget, I'm on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, supported by our patrons. Everything's Hurricane Track. Search for it. Easy to find. Hurricane, T-R-A-C-K. I am Mark Settle for Hurricane Track and HurricaneTrack.com, our website. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.